Today on the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast, we are talking about losing your mind is a choice. So my guest does everything in memory for her mom who suffered and died with Alzheimer's. She states no one should ever have to die like that and her whole life has been a mission to help others avoid this terrible fate. So if you have a loved one who is in the grip of Alzheimer's, you are gonna wanna listen to this episode today. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Thank you all for joining us today. My special guest has enjoyed a career as a writer, as a harpist, as a TV talk show host, but her most important job developed from her desire to prevent what happened to her mom from ever happening to anyone ever again. Seeing the devastation that dementia causes has made my guest a passionate advocate for prevention of this terrible disease. By researching and creating a program to prevent dementia, my guest has made it her life's work to educate and empower women to shape up their bodies, which I can concur with on that, and to save their brains. (laughs) She believes that losing your mind is a choice. So welcome, Kate Kunkel, to the show. I'm so happy that you are here. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and I'm excited to share what I can with your listeners. Awesome. And you are my second, I guess, international guest, which I am so thrilled with. So tell everybody where you're at right now. Ah, I'm in Salinas, Ecuador. We're on the coast of Ecuador, just about midway in the country. And it's getting into winter here, which is not really winter, but we're we have a little retreat center here. And so it's been pretty quiet the last few months, as you can imagine, but we love it here. It's, it's been, it's kind, it was kind of my dream. My whole life, literally my whole life, I wanted to live by the ocean. And it mm. took me 60 years, but I finally got here. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm assuming before this, you lived in Las Vegas because you went from a harpist in Las Vegas to a dementia prevention specialist. So what inspired that big change? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, my mom um, uh, was uh, diagnosed with dementia. Well, she had cancer a few times, like three times. Mm -hmm. And then she was um, um, diagnosed for the fourth time. And it was about the same time that she began exhibiting signs of dementia. That was also about the time that my TV show was wrapping up. It had done nine years and that was long enough. Um, So um, I decided to go back home to Canada where my family is and spend time with my mom and see what I could do, you know, because my, (laughs) I've, I've always been about researching and trying to figure out things. So I thought maybe I could help her. Unfortunately, the cancer kind of took precedence. They, they worked on, doing what they could for that. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so, but, but, but watching her go through that has made me into a, almost a rabid proponent of prevention because I, now the more I learn, the more I realize that unless you have exceptional circumstances, you really should never have to go through this. Through dementia and mm-hmm. Alzheimer's, yeah. yeah. So what does diet have to do with all this? Wow, so much. I would say between diet and exercise, those are the two biggest things that contribute to the prevent or the um, creation of dementia and Alzheimer's. So diet, um, everything is about the gut and brain access. So we have a connection directly from those little guys that run around in our belly, the, the, the microbiome and the brain. And if we don't have a healthy microbiome, we don't have a healthy brain. It, it just doesn't work. There is such a thing as leaky gut, even though some people say no, that isn't. But I truly believe from my research and the, my understanding is that we do have uh, situations from food, from inflammation, from stress, all of these things that can cause the gut to be leaky. And that makes the things that shouldn't be going through the bloodstream go through the bloodstream and they can affect the brain. So that's number one. Diabetes is a huge contributor. Like it, you have a very, a much higher likelihood of developing dementia if you have type 2 diabetes. So everything that you eat that contributes to diabetes is also going to contribute to dementia. Yeah. Now, I've read that um, they're now saying that Alzheimer's is like the third type of diabetes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The reason is because um, in, in type, what, what when they call it type 3 diabetes, they're referring to the fact that the brain is not able to use the glucose properly. There's an insulin resistance problem. So if it can't use the glucose, what's it got? And then unless you are able to tap into ketones, which is, which is where the keto diet comes in, mm-hmm. then the brain basically starves and mm-hmm. you start losing 
brain cells. And, and more importantly, even beyond the brain cells is the connections between them. That's the big, the big issue. Yeah. So for listeners out there who are not really familiar with um, diabetes, you know, we have the, the two types. One, you're dependent on insulin and you usually have an insulin pack. And then type two is avoidable <laughs> through diet and exercise. And unfortunately, the type two is, I know in America, is rampant for sure. Um, so can you talk a little bit more um, about the ketogenic diets and how that is affecting Sure, absolutely. So, so remember diabetes, um, a type two diabetes, particularly, it's all about um, too many carbohydrates that your body, your, the, your insulin is not able to deal with properly. Your body cannot manage the insulin needed or not needed. And that's why diet sodas also are not really, they're terrible for diabetes mm -hmm. because they also mess with that whole process of dealing with the insulin production. So when we take away the carbohydrates and we go to a ketogenic and you can be vegan and ketogenic, I'm mostly ketogenic because I'm, and I'm vegan hundred mm -hmm. percent, but you can do that without having to have meat and bacon and, you know, dairy yeah. and all of that. And actually for the brain, it's better to not have dairy and for diabetes type two. Interestingly, you would think that it would be better for diabetics, but it isn't because of the inflammation that dairy causes. Yeah, and I know too, because I, um, when I turned 40, I became lactose intolerant. Uh -huh. And you know, the lactose in the sugar in the milk is the problem with everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that is why, you know, with diabetes, the dairy, it's the sugar. It's not actual, if we could take the sugar out, <laughs> It would be fine. <laughs> well, actually, no. And, and well, it might be better. But the problem yeah. is the dairy itself, independent of the sugars in the dairy, it, it causes inflammation. We are mm -hmm. baby cows are meant to have milk and <laughs> people aren't meant to have milk past mother's milk after what, two years old or so. So we're not we're not designed. We have not evolved to use that properly. So when you're um, ingesting things that are not actually being utilized because the body doesn't quite know what to do with them, you get a state of inflammation. Mm. And inflammation causes all kinds of problems, including um, contributing to diabetes. So that's, that's really the problem there. The sugars, yes, but yeah. also the inflammation. Yeah, interesting. interesting. Yeah. And so that's why the keto diet, because it, it takes you from using glucose as a source of energy to using mm -hmm. your body's fat as a source of energy. And those, um, and it produces ketones, which your, your brain loves. Your brain loves using ketones for energy. And that's why you feel so much more, many people do at least on the keto diets, whichever form they decide to use, they feel sharper, they have better memory. It's because their brain is using an alternate fuel source that is more efficient for them. Right. Now, as far as the keto diet, I, I, I really have mixed emotions on the keto diet. And I know, um, based in science, that keto is great for someone who has epilepsy. Mm -hmm. um, they've done studies on children, especially, that it's been very helpful to them. Um, what I find interesting is, so in order to get into that ketosis, you need to endure, <laughs> and especially if you've been eating a lot of processed foods, you need to endure like keto hell almost <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to get through that process. And um, can you speak a little bit to that or and, and your experience sure. with people sure. that you work with? Absolutely. So the thing about that is, is we don't have to use um, a, a, like a keto diet to get into a, a regular form of ketosis. We can do what's called intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating. And I actually prefer that way of doing it. And all that means is you don't eat for 12 hours. How hard can that be, right? right. You stop, you, if you have dinner at six, you don't eat again until the next day at seven right. or whatever. You're right. sleeping through most of it. Yeah. Deal, right? <laughs> yeah, and and, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. But to that point, um, I know a lot of people come to me for intermittent fasting and, and I'm, like you're already doing it most of the time. Like 
I think people think they have to fast for like five days straight. I'm like, that's not ideal. No, <laughs> no. And yeah. that should always be with medical supervision. Right? Exactly. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So when you, when you do that um, time restricted eating, um, then you, your brain does have a chance to clean out. Firstly, it goes into autophagy, right? When you're not, when you're not continually feeding the body, your brain gets a chance to clean out some of the old stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we need to do that so that there's room for the new stuff. And that that's when that's why keto is re really good. It's, it's not so much the ketosis itself. It's that it helps stimulate autophagy. Auto autophagy is basically the process by which our brain, well, all of our cells clean. But we're especially for my purposes concerned about how it works in the brain. And so when we go into a state of ketosis, when we're, when we're or, or actually when we're sleeping and we're not eating and we're not continually giving food to our bodies to deal with, then the brain and, and the other cells have a chance to clean out. And to my way of thinking, that's really the most important part of, of getting into a state of ketosis so that we can clean out those old cells and leave room for memory to be formed when we're sleeping, like for memory to be kept in the long-term memory, you know, all of those important things when we're actually um, not eating. Yeah. That's what happens when we don't eat all the time. You know, snacking, yeah. People will snack even in the day. They feel like they have to have something in their mouth all the time. And that's, we just don't need it. Yeah. Um, so not to dive into my whole medical background, but um, I have reactive hypoglycemia, which apparently is very rare. And what I found very frustrating when I went to the doctors is they were saying, you know, when your blood sugar drops, you need to eat another meal. But when you eat more meals, it also raises your blood sugar which is again, the point of it. But at the same time, I, I look at people who have diabetes and, you know, and they're constantly having to eat throughout the day, but are they, I'm just questioning the medical society. Do I know for a fact? No, because I don't study this, but it's interesting to just be aware of like, is this, you know, it's almost like I want to say to the listeners, you know, under medical guidance, of course, but try and experiment with these different things that they're saying, because I know there's some people that um, are on keto and they feel fabulous. And then I know there's other people who are on keto and they feel horrible. Or if they just add a little bit more complex carbs, you know, more of the vegetables, they seem to do a little bit better. So that's, that's interesting. The whole variations of keto. Oh yeah. And I, and I truly believe like, I was on keto many, many, many years ago. Totally. It was when the Dr. Atkins, the Atkins diet, that's how long ago that was. And it was completely unhealthy when I know what now, now that I know all of this stuff about, it, I'm like, Oh my God, what was I doing to myself? But, um, I did feel freaking amazing. I got to tell you, I dropped like 40 pounds. I had more energy. I was going, I was in Las Vegas. I was performing at the time. Nothing could stop me. I was just, Toom. <laughs> however, as soon as you stop eating that way, and I started feeling guilty and terrible about eating that way. And so I had to stop and boy, did I balloon. I gained all this weight. And yeah, I just, I think when you do anything to extremes, Mm -hmm. Like anything in life, if you're extreme, you're going to put yourself into a boat that you, that's going to sink because right. our bodies are not, we're not meant to do that. Everything in moderation. Yeah. One of the important things that you said is medically supervised because with all the diets that are out nowadays, and a lot of people are not aware, but Atkins is the keto diet down the line. You know what I mean? And diets will recycle and they will repeat each, you know, every decade, there's the same diet. They just put a new label on it. Um, but knowing the difference between something that is a fad diet or something that you get on the internet versus something that is medically prescribed for you, I think is really important because I think a lot of women go on these crazy diets oh. and, you know, they beat themselves up, not just physically because yeah. they're eating these new foods, but then mentally they're messing with their brain because they're like, why can't I do this? Why is yeah. this not working or whatever? So Definitely yeah. go to your doctor. Can you talk a little bit about how exercise will help reduce chances of developing dementia? If I were to tell people two things to do for, for preventing dementia, the first would be exercise. The second would be diet. Well, they're pretty close tie, but the exercise is hugely important for many reasons. Number one, it helps clean out all the old stuff because you're detoxing, you're sweating, you're doing all that. You need to get 
the heart pumping. So when I say exercise, I mean aerobic exercise. You need to get your heart pumping. Um, I recommend fast walking. Now, there are a lot of people when they're starting, they can't walk fast. But even if you walk a little bit and you're not used to it, you're going to start feeling a difference. You're going to breathe harder. You're gonna, your, your heart's going to pump like it hasn't pumped for a while. Okay. So you want to walk, start walking. What they say about getting oxygen to your brain, it's absolutely right. You have to. Otherwise, it's, I think it's just going to starve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think our bodies were made to move. Our bodies were not made to sit in front of computers all day and sit on the couch and watch Netflix and yeah, and eat <laughs> all day long <laughs> for sure. So it's really easy for us to talk about making these changes. And some of us, dementia seems like it's really a long, long way away. The older you are though, what are the more likelihood of you getting dementia, Alzheimer's, and also if you are a woman over 40, should you be worried about this now? I don't like people to worry about anything, but, but the bottom line is women are more likely, twice as likely to develop dementia as partly because we live longer. That's one small part of it. Mm. We handle stress differently physically. The cortisol is um, dispersed. Everything happens differently for us when we deal with stress and stress is a huge contributor to the likelihood of developing dementia. Even if you're only 30, I tell people everything you put in your mouth, when you decide whether or not to exercise or sit on the couch, mm. think, is this good for my brain? Because if you're not moving, if you're eating sugar and processed foods and you're drinking too much, and certainly if you're smoking, you are, you are building up the things that cause dementia because it doesn't happen overnight. Even, like right. you, it doesn't just get turned on. It starts with weird little things. Like, Dang, I can't find my keys. <laughs> right. Yeah, why did I come in here again? Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we Wait. laugh about those things, but it's not funny. Yeah. Because that means that things are starting. Well, I think most people think when that happens is like, oh, I'm just getting older. You don't have to go that way. I'm. I'm. I'm very sincere when I say. Yeah. We do mm -hmm. not have to go that way. Even if you have the Alzheimer's gene, the APOE4 gene, you don't have to have that. You don't have to go that way because we make just with the it's the same with the cancer genes. When they are triggered, then they manifest things. Mm. But we have to trigger them. That's a choice. Right. That's a lifestyle choice. That's why I say losing your mind is a choice. And but now, by the time you're 85, you have a one in two chance. Like you have oh, a 50 wow. percent chance. Wow. of developing dementia. Wow. So you need to like think 30 years, 40 years before then and start looking after yourself now. But you do that. I mean, look, having people looking after their body is a huge part of looking after their brain. They, they don't work separate. Right, right. Here's my brain and there's my body. <laughs> yeah, but people yeah. think that, yeah? yeah? They think, oh, I'm, I'm really fit. But in the meantime, they have negative thoughts all the time or they don't, you know, they don't learn new things. All they do is mm, pump yes. iron or whatever. You've got to learn new things too, yeah? That was my next question because I know um, I have a background in physical therapy and they were always talking about like doing puzzles, doing word problems, those kind of things to keep your mind active is that something we need to look into or is it just a matter of just keeping learning new things yeah it's more about learning new things so if you've done crosswords all your life continuing to do crosswords is not going to help mm. because it's not creating new pathways in the oh, brain okay yep um, so like learning a new language, learning a musical instrument of course I'm a musician so I always <laughs> urge people to to sing. Mm -hmm. that's a huge thing for the brain because you have to coordinate a lot of stuff going on there. Oh. Yep. So can you tell everybody about the five things that you can do right now to save your brain? Sure. So if you really want to get started and, and please, I beg you, whoever's listening, <laughs> get started now looking after your brain because it's, it, you're never too early, but you can be too late. Mm -hmm. So the things that we've talked about here with exercise, diet, learning new things, getting out in the world, um, getting sunshine, sunshine's very important, mm, yeah. um, getting out there, those things, I've put them in, a, in a, a guide for you. So you can get that and get started right away. I think the big thing people think about health is often it's such hard work and it's so serious. And sure, it's serious, but you can have so much fun looking after yourself. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, and nobody else is going to do it for you. So you might as well step up, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's the best place to find me. Just katekunkel.com. You can reach me there. I'm on Facebook. Um, but please, you know, if you have any questions, I always encourage people don't I mean I'm not some you know guy sitting on a mountaintop I, I'm here to ask and to help because I don't want anybody honestly I don't want yeah. anybody to go through what my mama did it was a terrible way to go and I, I'll do anything I can to help people prevent that so if anybody missed the link don't worry about it you can go to shapeitupfitness.com click on this episode all right so let's jump into the speed round <laughs> okay <laughs> All right. So from our brief talk before, I'm not sure which direction you're going to go for this first one, but cat or dog person? Cat. This is a question I've been asking guests is we all kind of have some weird, unique job that we may or may not have liked in our past. Um, I always give like uh, the one where I worked at a pizza place and I had to dress up as a clown. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I refused to wear the hair, but... <laughs> They didn't fire me, so it's all good. Um, but do you have a instance like that? Yeah, I do. I sold Filter Queen vacuum cleaners. Okay. <laughs> door to door, or <laughs> yeah. Well, they they made appointments for us, and we had to go demonstrate. And I did that for like two weeks, and I realized two that weeks. that was not going to be my career. My career. <laughs> nice. All right. If you could only choose one song to play every time you walked into a room for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ave Maria. Oh, I like that. Do you have a favorite toy growing up? I did not. I, I really wasn't into toys. I Books. I read all the time. Okay, good. Books. So the next question will be a tough one for you. What is your favorite book and why? <laughs> uh, the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. That book has held me through many things. So. What is your favorite inspirational quote? Mm, boy, there's so many. Just do it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, because I, I grew up with that. Just mm -hmm. do it. Just and do it's it. been my mantra. Yeah, I think I've done a lot of things in my 62 years, let me tell you. And I've always just jumped in. I played the harp for exactly one year before I moved to Las Vegas and began playing professionally. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, it's, I, it's just the way I am. I, I love people like that. I love, like, I think we spend too much time thinking about things, like overthinking and like, what if this happens and what if this happens? And we should just, obviously don't be reckless, but like <laughs> go for what you want to do and see what happens. And then course correct as you go. Yeah, I've done a lot of course correcting for <laughs> sure. But you know what? When I get to the end of my life, I know that I can say, I did what I wanted to do. I tried yeah. what I wanted to try. So yeah. let's go for it. And everybody can do that. Yeah. You just have to get rid of the fear. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. That's um, one of the reasons I, when I was 13, I told my parents I wanted to be a professional ballet dancer and I went to college for bachelor of fine arts and I went there because my mom kind of was like, you need a degree. So <laughs> I had one. And then I was like, I'm going to dance because if I don't do it now, I know I'm not going to do it when I'm 30 or 40 or, you know, beyond. So yeah. Good just, for you. Just do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is one takeaway that you want to give the listeners before we wrap up? Yeah. I think the most important thing is to know that it's never too early to start looking after your brain, but it can be too late. So start now. And, and every decision you make, every, every choice you have decide, is that good for my brain or not? I think those are great words. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day, your winter hiatus. <laughs> which now is I probably, have to go. <laughs> it's probably our dream spring. <laughs> spring, yeah. Now I have to go round up cats. Have you ever tried herding cats? That's where I'm headed now. <laughs> no, I have not. I can only imagine. I have two kids that I have to herd enough. So that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here, and everybody else. Thank you so much for listening, and I will talk to you guys next week.